Spencer Latina. Martin, thank you so much for joining us today. Well, thank you. It's been an honor to be invited and share this time with you. Martin, let's begin with some of the political context to this Sunday's general elections. We should recall that the Sandinista National Liberation Front has a long history. Could you explain some of this historical context for any of our viewers who are unfamiliar with it? I'm sorry, with... Uh... Martin, can you hear me? Well, yes. Martin. Uh, can you hear me? Can you hear yes, me? Yes, I can hear you. Can you hear me, Martin? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, so I was going to ask you, what's the political context to these elections this Sunday? Well, we have to go back uh, more than uh, 20 years ago. Uh, Daniel Ortega lost the election of 1990 amidst a bloody war uh, that was led directly from the White House. We should remember Colonel Nor Oliver North and this with the supply of weapons to the Contra bands. And that led to the Iran-Contra scandal. We should all remember that. So uh, Daniel Ortega lost to, in 1990 to uh, Violeta Chamorro and was in the opposition for 16 years. Then he came back in 2006 and won the elections that year uh, with 38% of the vote. Nicaragua then was uh, living permanently under blackouts, short electrical shortage most of the day. Poverty was rising, and people saw in Daniel Ortega and the promise of the Sandinista Front with the uh, national programs and projects to develop so, uh, in Nicaragua socially and economically. Martin, mm. as you said, Daniel Ortega has been re-elected on several occasions. The expectations are that this Sunday won't be any different. How can we explain this support among the Nicaraguan population? Well, uh, once the administration of the Sandinista Front started applying the, the projects and social programs, economic pro programs it has in the book, the country and the nation was started to develop. Uh, nominated again for the 2011 elections, which uh, he, the Sandinista Front, won with 62% of the vote. And then he re-elected himself again in 2016 with 72.45% of the votes, of the, of the electoral vote. And that was a record level in voting uh, support for any candidate in the history of Nicaragua. And then now we come to these elections after five more years. And uh, the country has developed a lot since then. And then this election has been presented by the United States, particularly the U.S. government, and its acolytes in the region as a farce. But this is a democratic election in which six political parties are contending. Sandinista Front is one, but then we have the Constitutional Liberal Party, we have the Alliance for the Republic, which, is, which nominated the youngest uh, candidate, 29-year-old candidate. And then uh, we have a reverend, which is also a lawmaker, which is contending for the Nicaraguan Christian path. So this is a democratic relations, and is not the farce that the US government and the media uh, tries to present. Martin, you said there that um, Ortega has been re-elected several times and the Sandinista Front because of the progress that Nicaragua has seen under this government. What are some of the key aspects of the government program that have led to this progress and this development of Nicaragua? Well, we have to take in, uh, I'll give you a few examples. For instance, in uh, 2006, there were only 206 what they call health units in the country. Today, there are over 1,500 health centers in, throughout Nicaragua. Also, Nicaragua today has the most modern network of roads and highways in the whole region. I mean, I'm talking about Central America. 
Today, Nicaragua has the lowest crime rate in the region, and even including better crime rates than many uh, countries in Latin America. Also, the economy kicked off tremendously, and for this year, despite the pandemic, the economy will grow between 6 and 8 percent. So the gross domestic product will have a successful year end. Also, for instance, in the last week of October, 700 houses were delivered to the same number of families. That is a part of a project that is called Houses for the People. Also, sanitary uh, sewer have been, is already covering over 60% of the countries. Besides that, running water that, was 60, that covered only 65% of the uh, population in 2005, today, today over 91% of Nicaraguan families have running water. These are things that Nicaraguan have taken into consideration to keep voting in favor of the Sandinista Front. Martin, as you mentioned, there's been a very strong attack by Western powers and in the media regarding this electoral process with claims that Daniel Ortega has imprisoned any of his opposition. As you said, there are actually six parties participating and apart from the Sandinista Front, the rest of the parties are opposition parties. Can we expect further attempts at destabilization and attempts to undermine the results of these elections by the United States and the European Union? Oh, sorry, couldn't get your question. So I, I'll repeat it, Martin. We, I was just asking you um, whether the United States and the European Union are likely to continue to undermine the results of these elections should Daniel Ortega win. Of course, that is the policy and the line the, the Washington is following. To discredit, first to discredit the election, presented it as farce, and besides that, it will continue the same line against, just like it is doing uh, against Venezuela, it is now doing against Cuba, and it's doing against uh, many governments and uh, systems around the world. The United States will continue to try to describe the election, the results of the elections. I'm expecting a result around 70% 70, 70 uh, vote uh, in favor of Daniel Ortega and Rosario Moreno. For instance, uh, there is a private agency that is called MNR Consulting Firm. Its general director, Mr. Raul Obregón, uh, did 11 uh, public surveys throughout uh, Nicaragua in the past th uh, three months. And according to the results of these 11 surveys, which are national surveys, over 70% of Nicaraguans will favor and support the Sandinista Front. So, how will they discredit? They will use the media, they will use the social media, the main press, to, uh, to try to uh, libel the results of the elections. But truth will prevail. That's what I believe. Martin, there's actually over 200 delegates who are uh, foreign delegates who are accompanying these elections today. And we've had some um, our peaceful and democratic the uh, electoral process has been according to what they've been seeing on the ground. Before the elections, we heard from um, Joseph Borrell of the EU saying that these elections were fraudulent before they even started. In this context, as you said, we can expect that the attempts to discredit the results will continue. But moving on to the regional context of these elections, should Daniel Ortega remain in power, as is expected, what does that mean for the wider region of Latin America and the Caribbean? Well, Nicaragua will continue to be a stable country, a stable nation within Central America that has the respect of neighboring uh, countries and government. Also, it is contributing uh, with its security and safety to bring uh, also a balance of stability in the region. That is what, what I believe. And also, the United States and with its uh, OIS, the Organization of American States, will also be used to try to discredit the relations and the results. The OIS, we should mention, Cathy, if I can call you Cathy, as we are colleagues, mm -hmm. uh, 
was not invited to oversee the elections. After the, what happened in Bolivia in 2008, that the OAS led, practically led, the, uh, the political coup against President Evo Morales, of course, Daniel Ortega will not fall in the same trap. And of course, did not, invited, did not invite uh, the OAS, but over 200 uh, observers, like you said, have oversun the whole process, particularly today elections, and will uh, be overseeing the vote counting. That's what I see on um, the results. When Nicaragua will continue to grow, the government will continue to vaccinate people to keep uh, the pandemic under control. Nicaragua is one of the few countries, I would say, less than five countries in the world are vaccinating children over two years old. Nicaragua is one of them. It is using a Sputnik uh, V vaccine, a Sputnik light vaccine, AstraZeneca vaccine, and now, after agreement was signed, it will start using seven million Cuban Abdallah vaccine. So Nicaragua will continue growing. Uh, today, Nicaragua today has the most modern baseball stadium in the region. That is the baseball stadium of Managua. But right now, a very modern stadium is being built in the city of Leon. A, a bridge which will boost the economic and social development of all central, um, uh, central Nicaragua is being uh, completed by, uh, will be completed by early next year. Today is 65% finished. It is the, uh, the Wiwili bridge between the province of Nueva Segovia and Hinoteca. This will bring a boost to the economy and the social balance and stability of the whole central region of Nicaragua. That's how we see. Projects and programs will continue to be implemented, carried out, and Daniel Ortega will, and the government will continue to present and participate in world, uh, the World International Forum. Martin, as you say, huge social and economic development under the presidency of Daniel Ortega, and we can expect more to come should these election results turn out as is expected according to the polls. Martin Hatchkins, a journalist at Prince Salatina, thank you so much for joining us, and thank you for offering your valuable insight into what's happening in Nicaragua today. Thank you, Kathy. It's been an honor to talk to you and Telesur uh, English Edition. Thank you, Martin. And we move on now um, as Nicaraguans prepared for the